Hello and welcome to Top 10 Emerging Technologies, a show from the World Economic Forum that looks at the performance of some of the most promising technologies from the past decade. I'm your host, Alice Hazelton, and in today's episode, we're talking about precise genetic engineering techniques, which made it onto the 2015 list. So this story really starts with DNA. You probably know that DNA is the code of life that gives cells the ability to function, gives organisms the ability to develop. But when there are mutations in that code, um, it can also give rise to disease. And we know a lot about the sequences of DNA in cells right now, but we, and we know about mutations. But up until now, it hasn't been possible to do much about those mutations. Imagine that we had a tool whereby we could actually fix individual mutations in DNA, much like you would do with a word processor to cut and paste and edit text. What if we had a text editor for DNA in cells? Here today to tell us more about these genetic engineering techniques is Fang Zhan, a professor at MIT and one of the pioneers of the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system. Hi, Fang. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, Fang, you've helped to pioneer a technology that allows us to edit the genomes of plants and animals, including humans, in a quick and efficient way. But can you just tell us exactly how it works and why it's different to some of the genetic engineering techniques that we've seen in the past? So the human genome is very large. It's got, um, uh, you know, three billion letters uh, in the genome. And if you think of this as a book, uh, there could be typos uh, in, in this uh, document. And so the way that you would actually fix something in the Microsoft Word is you open up the find function and you type in that typo. And then the, per the program will take the cursor to exactly where uh, that typo is. So now you can backspace to delete and you can type in new letters. The way CRISPR-Cas9 works is that it works in the chemical environment inside of your cell you can give it a string um, in the form of RNA. CRISPR-Cas9 will take the string and then search along the genome to find out where that mutation, uh, that genetic difference is uh, in the DNA. That's where you can delete sequences and that's where you can insert a uh, new DNA sequences. We harnessed it so that we can use it in the human genome uh, to make genetic changes to treat disease and also to be able to uh, better understand biology. Great. And is, is the CRISPR-Cas9 system the first time that we've been able to do this? Or were there other techniques in the past but that maybe they just took longer? How, tell us how CRISPR is different to the past. Uh, what is really unique about CRISPR is that it's far simpler and easier uh, to reprogram and to be able to use inside the cells. Uh, before, it used to take a researchers uh, maybe several weeks or even longer uh, to be able to engineer a new gene editor uh, to be able to edit a specific gene. Uh, with CRISPR-Cas9, you can design a new editor within minutes, and then you can design tens of thousands of editors to, to study many genes and, and edit many mutations. Great. So if we think of CRISPR-Cas9 as kind of some molecular scissors, I guess, what, what are these molecular scissors already being used for today? CRISPR-Cas9 is being used in a lot of different places, from research to biotechnology, uh, in agriculture and industrial organism engineering, uh, all the way to the development of human therapeutics. And, and all of these take advantage of CRISPR-Cas9's ability to make precise changes in the genome so that we can uh, engineer function or to restore uh, healthy patients. And so looking ahead, what, what do you think we can see from genetic engineering techniques over the next five to 10 years. Uh, scientists have developed CRISPR-Cas9 as treatments uh, for sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia, and also for congenital genetic disorders uh, in, in other parts of the body, like in the liver. But also uh, it's being used in agriculture. Um, researchers are, uh, or scientists are, are engineering crops that are drought resistant, uh, pest resistant, uh, producing higher yield. Um, so, so overall, uh, these are just the tip of iceberg. I think we're going to see a lot of um, additional applications uh, in the future. And hearing from you now, it sounds like there's so much opportunity for the future. Um, but are there any challenges that you see on the horizon as well? So we heard a couple of years ago um, that there were uh, scientists who have used gene editing to edit embryos uh, and, then, and then created uh, gene edited babies. 
And and these are um, uh, things that, that should not have happened, and and they certainly um, you know breached uh, ethical um, uh, considerations. And and these are the things that that is really important to to deal with as we uh, move forward. We we'll have to come up with uh, ways to be able to uh, to regulate it and ways to be able to. Uh, to sort of consider what are the things that we want to um, do and what are the things that we don't want to uh, cross the boundary. Great. Fang, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on, you know, the progress to date, but also the opportunities and indeed the challenges for the future. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. As we've heard today, Precise genetic engineering techniques, such as the CRISPR-Cas9 system, have made significant headway since making the top 10 emerging technologies list back in 2015. Gene editing is such a powerful technology that has the potential to upend both the environment and humanity. For example, we've heard how researchers can now use this editing tool to engineer crops so that they're resistant to drought or to even treat genetic disease. Opportunities to improve planetary and human health are clearly plentiful, but governing the use of this technology will be paramount to its success as it's clear that there are some ethical issues that still need to be resolved. If you enjoyed this episode, please join the conversation on social media and we'll see you next time for another episode of Top 10 Emerging Technologies.